Hey, it's old Uncle Mark from the Mothership. Here in the Mothership, it's uh, snowing like crazy out there, but uh, we are nice and warm in here. We are rocking out some uh, classic rock tunes. This is a classic rock song by Steppenwolf. Iconic tune, Born to be Wild. Three chords. Count them. Three. Okay? D. So we all know that open is G, G sharp. A, B flat, B, C with that dot right there. C sharp and D right here. It's also D sharp, E, F above the dot, F sharp, G again. And just to let you know, it starts over. G sharp, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D. D sharp, E, all of these notes are going to be important in this song because you want to stretch this song out. It's got two sets of lyrics. It plays one of them over, so it's an easy song to learn. But it's very short if you don't stretch it out a little bit. And so what we're going to do is explore some octaves. And octaves are just two notes. Um, uh, it's a really a dyad, but in, on a cigar box guitar, it's two octaves. A dyad is two notes played at the same time. A chord is three notes played at the same time. So this would be a chord. This would be a dyad. Or an octave. However you want to... However you want to say it, that's fine. I like the word octave, but um, some of you purists may want to use the word dyad. Um, that's fine. These are just $5 words that musicians throw around each other and we act like we're smarter than everybody else and, you know, well, of course we are, right? So, we're a big, we're a big family, so we can handle it. Um, so anyway, Born to be Wild, D. All right, it's got an F and a G in it, but I want you to play the F in the second inversion. Um, if you haven't seen my inversions uh, lesson, you should look at my inversions lesson. Um, it talks about how they work and what an inversion is. But the F chord is your second finger or third. Doesn't matter to me. It's up to you. Second or third. And either your pinky or your third finger here. So, C and C and F. Or this way. Depends on what you want to do. If you got a slide on your pinky, this is your option here. If you got a slide on your third finger, you're going to have to use your second finger right here, second and pinky and first. It's it's all what you want. It's all what you're after. It's all cool. You know, I just uh, want you to kind of learn these shapes. So that's an F. So the F note is there, right? C and C. And the G note is here, so a G and a G. Yes, you can play it open. I think you're going to find it's easier if you learn the second inversion. So you're going to go D, F, G, D. F. Okay, so I use my third finger because I'm already here, right? I don't make that many moves, okay? The less moves your hand makes, the, the quicker you will become and the less you'll have to watch your hand because you're gonna come up from this F, right, to here, and you're just gonna lay down, right? So practice laying down from your chord shape, right? And you should, uh, we've got uh, February, we've got football coming up, we've got pro basketball, we've got March Madness. These are great opportunities to practice these shapes everywhere. Uh, just to let you know, this is how I practice. I sit and I run through shapes. backwards and forwards through my shapes. So we digressed a little bit. So the song is in D. You know how this goes.
back to F. Hell, nothing's gonna make it happen. F. G. World in a love embrace. Fire all of your guns at once and explode in the space. I like smoking light. Heavy metal thunder. Racing with the wind. And I'm feeling that I'm under. Yeah, driving's gonna make it happen. Take the world. also another way to do that and you can go from D to C to this funny chord right this funny chord is just your second finger on your B your third I think it is a B chord uh, to be honest I'm not sure exactly what kind of a B it is you know I bet you it would look like, um, if someone drew it, it would be a B forward slash G on it, something like that. So, you put your first finger on that B note of the fat string, on uh, the opposite B on the thin one, and then you're uh, on the D string on that G note. So you can go, one, two, three. do that that's fine so now you come to a solo part there's nothing to do but well you know your bandmates uh your girlfriend or your birds i have i have a couple parakeets three they get awfully bored with you doing this over and over Actually, you're gonna get bored with it too. So I want to spice this solo up. I want to spice it up with octaves. So you're gonna take your second finger and you're gonna put it on that D. See that dot? I can see that D. And then you're gonna take your third finger, your ring finger, and put it on this B. Okay? And with this third finger you're gonna kind of lay down a little bit. You can see it lay down on that D string. So my D string doesn't sound like anything, right? I'm not gonna play it, I'm gonna mute it. Muting is another word. Mute, to mute something is to uh, take it away. So I'm kind of taking it away. So I'm gonna play both of these notes at once with this muted. Okay? This song has an availability of notes where you can go from the B, or I mean from this D, to the E, to the F, to the G, to the A, to the B again, to the C, and then to the D. So you can fool around, you can take them any way you want. You can go... that are allowed, okay, are D, E, F, G, A, B, C. You're just trying to avoid sour notes. That's what soloing is all about. It's avoiding sour notes. So if you know what notes you can play, you can fool around with this. So you can slide these. Uh, 
Jimi Hendrix did a lot of sliding octaves, and that's where I heard it first, you know? I heard all the... And that's where I heard all these octaves the first time, and I went, wow, what is he doing? You know, and I had to figure it out, right? So that's what we're gonna do in this song. So you're here, you've done that second verse. guitarist. He's a tremendous guitarist. He had a uh, lesson on how to solo, and one of his lessons is start low and work high and end up back low again. Solos create tension. The idea is to create a bunch of tension and then release it. So when you're doing these things, remember that, and once you find a riff you like, keep it. pocket here and you always have it you can pull it out and go I got this riff I can use it anywhere you know this riff that, that I just did here you can take that and put it in nine different songs no one's gonna know the difference because you're gonna change key and you're gonna do all kinds of little things and, and make it different every time but it's still the same concept right so that's how I think of soloing so uh, That's classic rock, man, the way it's supposed to be. Hammer, hammer, hammer. All right? Practice that, too. Little endings. Endings are big, man. Big in classic rock. So, so is Uncle Mark. I'm in the mothership. Uh, down below in the show notes, there is a... Uh, there's a virtual tip jar. It's a paypal.me forward slash Uncle Mark Tips. Um, I know who's been donating. I thank you so much. Bottom of my heart, thank you. Uh, subscribers, thank you. People that are sharing on social media, thank you too. I really appreciate it. This lesson ran a little long, but I wanted to do it all in one. So uh, we'll go back to our usual beginnings, and I mean, beginner lesson, advanced lesson, but I just wanted to get this all in one. So uh, you guys have a great day. Take care.